learners and viewers, welcome to our program on microeconomics. This program is specially designed for the students of our regular MBA program as well as the students of the Commonwealth Executive MBA program. This program is based on the chapters of the microeconomics textbook of the MBA program and the economic environment of business textbook of the Commonwealth Executive MBA program. Dear learners, please take uh, papers and pen in front of you so that you can keep notes and you can talk to your tutor as well as to me directly if you face any problem to catch uh, the lecture. Let me now introduce you with the aim and objectives of this program. The aim of this program is to help you have a clear understanding of the concepts and theories of demand and assist you analyze the real life issues based on the knowledge you will gather from this program. Now the objectives of this program. After carefully listening and viewing this program, you will be able to define the concept of demand for a commodity, describe the determinants of demand for a commodity explain the relationship between price of the commodity and the quantity demanded for the commodity, explain the law of demand, then you will be able to draw the demand curve from a demand schedule, then you will be able to explain the reasons of the shifts of and movements along the demand curve, finally you will be able to draw the market demand curve from individual demand curves. Dear learners and viewers, you must have noticed the people around you to utter the word demand in their usual discussions. But one thing you may not be clear, what exactly demand means from economic point of view. In economics, a person has the demand for a commodity if the person is willing to buy that commodity, he or she has the purchasing power, he or she has the desire to spend his or her money. Now, if you are asked to tell whether a person's desire to have something means he has the demand for that commodity. As a student of economics, your answer will be no. Why? Because the desire to have something does not mean necessarily that uh, the person has the demand for that commodity. Let us now take you to uh, a real life situation. You can see two persons are standing in front of a fruit shop. One is rich, another is poor. They both want to get some orange. This person asks the salesman that he wants some orange and he has the money to pay the price. The poor guy also wants some orange but does not have the money and thus he is refused to get any orange. What can you infer from this situation? Does both persons have demand for orange? To answer this question, let us recall what we learned few seconds back. Now, you can tell easily that the rich person has the demand for the commodity because the rich person has the money in his pocket and he has the desire to spend the money. Whereas, the poor person only has the desire to have some orange, but he does not have money with him. So, the poor person does not have demand for orange. Now, let us introduce you with the determinants of demand. Can you tell me some determinants of demand? Just think what are the forces, factors which determine the quantity demanded for a commodity? Just think why you buy more of a commodity, why you buy less of a commodity? If your income increases, do you buy more of the commodity or less of the commodity? If the population size increase of the country, the demand for a commodity will increase or decreased, you will easily find that the demand for the commodity basically depend on the price of the commodity. Commodities 
price is very important factor to determine demand. But there are other factors too. So, we can see now the determinants of demand. Price of the commodity, test, price of the related commodities, income of the consumer, population size, age, etcetera. Now, if we keep all other things same except the price of the commodity, what we find? We find if the price of the commodity is increased, the demand for the commodity decreases and the price of the commodity decreases, the demand for the commodity increases. That means, there is an inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded. And this inverse relationship is called the law of demand. So, now let us see what law of demand says. Remaining all other things same, if the price of a commodity rises, the demand for the commodity decreases. If the price of the commodity decreases, the demand for the commodity increases. Now, if we use numerical numbers to depict the relationship between price of the commodity and the dem quantity demanded for the commodity, we will find the demand schedule. Let us now see what is demand schedule. We can see when the price of the commodity that means potato is 15, the quantity demanded for potato is 3 kilo. And when the price is 13, the quantity demanded is 5. And when the price is 10, the quantity demanded is 8 kilo. And when the price is 7, the quantity demanded is 10. And when the price is 5, the quantity demanded is 15. So, we can see that when the price of the, pot, uh, of the commodity, that means uh, the price of potato decreases, the quantity demanded for potato is increasing. This is called demand schedule. Now, if we plot the price quantity combinations on a two dimensional space, we will get the demand curve. So, now let us see what is the characteristics of a demand curve. We can see the price and quantity combinations are drawn on the two dimensional space and combining the combinations we can get the DD demand curve. So, demand curve is downward sloping. It shows the inverse relationship between price and quantity. We can see when the price falls from taka 15 to taka 7, the quantity demanded for potato increased from 3 kilo to 10 kilo. So, in this case, the consumer is still on the demand curve just the consumer moves from one point on the demand curve to another point on the demand curve. So, you can see the consumer moves from point A to point B. This is called movement along the demand curve. What happens if other factors except price is changed? The consumer just shift from this demand curve to another demand curve. So, you can see the other factors like income, population size, tests, etcetera. So, in this case, if we assume that the income of the consumer is increased, we can see the demand curve shifts rightward. So, you can see D1, D1 is the new demand curve. What happens if we assume that the income is decreasing. If income is decreased, the demand curve shifts to the left. We can say D 2 D 2 is the new demand curve. Up to now, we have learned that the price of the commodity and the quantity demanded are inverse related and which has been depicted by the demand curve. So, any change in the price and the resultant change in the quantity demanded is depicted on the demand curve, just we move from one point to another point. 
But what happens if other factors like income, taste, population size, age, prices of other commodities, I mean related commodities are changed. In that case, demand curve shifts maybe to the right or to the left. Up to now, we have discussed the individual demand curve, but what happens if uh, in the market we have more consumers, I mean two or three or more consumers. In that case, how we will get the market demand curve from the individual demand curve? This is very simple. If we just add the individual demand curves horizontally, we will get the market demand curve. So, let us see now on the screen how the market demand curve is derived from the individual demand curves. We are assuming that in the market there are two consumers. So, we can see now that consumers, consumer wants demand is D1, D1. Similarly, we can get the consumer 2's demand curve that is D2, D2. And if we now like to get the market demand curve from consumer 1's demand curve and consumer 2's demand curve, we will just add D1, D2, D1, D1 with D2, D2 horizontally. Now, let us see how this addition is made. So, we can see the horizontal distances are put together on the market demand space. So, we can see at price 10, consumer 1's demand is 3 and consumer 2's demand is 2 and the market demand is 5 at ten, price 10. And what happens as at price 6? At price 6, consumer 1's demand is 5, consumer 2's demand is 5 and together the market demand at price 6 is 10. Now, if we add these two points, we will get the DD demand curve. This is called market demand curve. So, we are getting the market demand curve from the addition of the individual demand curves. So, what we have learned from this program? Actually, you learned lots of things. Uh, let us now see at a stretch what we actually got from this program. We learned the concept of demand, we learned the law of demand, we saw the demand schedule, we learned how to draw the demand curve from the demand schedule, we learned when movement along the demand curve occurs, when the demand curve shifts, why it shifts to the right, when it shifts to the left. We learned how we get the market demand curve from the individual demand curve. Dear learners and viewers, we are at the end of this program. Hope you have learned uh, a lot from this program and you got uh, the idea and knowledge about the theories and concepts of demand. Now, uh, you read your textbook and the reference book for more explanation of the concepts. We will meet uh, again with a new topic in this place. Have a nice time. Good luck. Thank you.